This video was sponsored by Chenda Industries. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric and I'm glad you could join us. We have got an awesome episode lined up for you today and it's taken us a little over six, seven months to finish this particular project, but it's finally done. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how we made the world's largest Genoa salami. This salami weighs in at 10 pounds. It's 190 millimeters from edge to edge or seven and a half inches in diameter. This salami is literally as big as my face. It can be used as a small plate. So let me show you how we made the world's biggest Genoa salami made by a home producer. Let's go. The first thing we want to do to make this epic salami is venture over to my website and find the Genoa recipe. If you go to the description box, I'll have a direct link so you don't have to worry about it. But once we get to the web page, I'm going to go to the recipe and just type in how much I want to make. I tried to make this recipe as easy as possible. So we're going to make 4,540 grams or 10 pounds, and the ingredients are automatically going to populate based off of what you type. So we're just going to go ahead and print that recipe and we're in business. So notice I have my bowl on a scale and as I'm cutting my pork, my beef and my pork fat, I'm just adding each one of those to my bowl until I get to the appropriate amount that the recipe tells me. Very, very easy. I'm cutting mine into small chunks, but you can cut yours into small strips. Either way, once you're done, you want to go ahead and stick it in your freezer so that it can partially freeze. You want the temperature of your meat below 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Very, very important. While that's chilling and partially freezing, we're going to prepare our starter culture. We're using a starter culture called Flavor of Italy. This is going to add the necessary bacteria to ferment our salami. And if you're new to salami making, salami is a fermented sausage, so we need to lower the pH through lactic acid production. This starter culture is going to help that very natural process along, and all we're doing is adding it to some distilled water, giving it a stir so that it can dissolve, and then allowing it to rehydrate for about half an hour. By the time it's rehydrated, your meat should be properly chilled. So let's go ahead and grind our meat. Now that that's finished, let's mix our meat. And if the temperature of your meat has risen too much during the grinding process, go ahead and rechill it for another 30 minutes. We still want the temperature to be under 35 degrees at every stage. Mine was relatively chilled, so we're gonna go ahead and mix it, add our seasonings, and then we're gonna add our starter culture. And as you see here, I'm just gonna drizzle in the starter culture as it's being mixed, just to make sure that it gets well incorporated. If you're mixing this by hand, you can add your starter culture a little at a time. You just wanna make sure that it's properly mixed, properly incorporated into your mincemeat. Once you have all your starter culture added, you're gonna to continue to mix until your mincemeat gets incredibly sticky and very, very tacky. If you grab a little handful of it, it's undeniable, it's just automatically gonna to stick to your hand. And that's when you know it's ready. That's the proteins that are being extracted from the meat that are gonna create that proper bind in your salami. So that's what we're looking for. This is our minced meat. It's super sticky, super tacky. Let's go ahead and get our casing ready. For this colossal salami, we chose to use dry curing wraps from the sausage maker. These things are super versatile and they act just like a casing. And because I couldn't actually find a casing, we needed some sort of a mold. So I went with the biggest cheese mold that I had, 190 millimeters, seven and a half inches in diameter. And I went ahead and lined the inside of it with that dry curing wrap or collagen sheet. Now, looking back on this project, there's a couple things that I would have done differently. This would definitely have been one of them. I wouldn't have lined that mold with the collagen sheet just yet. It wouldn't have been necessary. I would have waited until after I pulled it out of the mold and then wrapped it in the collagen sheet, but it ended up working out either way. So as we added each layer of meat to this mold, I made sure to press it down as much as I can to get out any air pockets. Air pockets are the enemy of salami. And for one more measure, we went ahead and put a follower on top of that salami with a 10 pound weight. 
so that it can press that salami during the time that it's fermenting. So at this point, the preparation of our salami is completely finished. All we have to do is let it ferment. We do need to test the pH. So I had a little bit of mincemeat left over that wouldn't fit into that mold. We're gonna put it into that ramekin, you know, cover it with some cling film. And that's what we're gonna use to test the pH. And I want you to notice the color of that meat right now. So we'll look at it again in a minute. So let's ferment our salami between 18 to 24 hours. Now these parameters are for flavor of Italy, 75 to 85F or 24 to 29C, high humidity, anything over 85%, and a pH of 4.9 to 5.2 is what we're targeting. So let's take a look at it. It's been about 20 hours. And just so you know, this salami was fermenting in my kitchen on the countertop, covered, nothing special. The temperature in our kitchen was about 75, 76, so we didn't have to do anything special. All right, so let's go ahead and stick that Apera Instruments pH meter, very easy unit to use. We're just looking for anything between 4.9 and 5.2, and we're at 5.03, so absolutely perfect. It's now time to unmold our salami, weigh it, and then place it in the drying chamber. Now, at this point, Everything that we've done has been very typical in salami making. We've done nothing different. I mean, other than, you know, put it into a cheese mold. But other than that, the process is exactly the same. Where everything can really go south with a salami this big is the drying chamber. The humidity's got to be perfect. The temperature's got to be perfect. And the airflow's got to be perfect. So the conditions in your chamber need to be 55 Fahrenheit or 13 C, 80% humidity, and it's gonna hang there until it loses 35 to 40% weight loss. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place my salami in the chamber, and truth is, I didn't really like this particular method of placement. So after about a week of trying to flip it every day, it just got cumbersome. This is what I ended up doing. So this is our salami after about one week of being in the chamber. It looks great. The natural molds in the chamber are growing all over it because I didn't actually wipe it down with any molds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a netting around it because I felt like it would be better for the salami to hang. And then I can flip it a lot easier, which is what we're gonna do in this one. So in round number two, this is one week later, we're gonna hang our salami. And it wasn't one or two days after we started to hang it that I realized, you know what? Maybe I don't like that either. And I realized that I might be a little obsessive compulsive, but so we ended up switching uh, this method, uh, not completely, we just ended up hanging it at two points to make rotating it a whole lot easier. So this is the final method that I actually settled on and every day I would open the chamber and rotate it 180 degrees. Now, honestly, I'm not even sure if that was necessary, but I didn't want to uh, go through the entire process and then wish that I had done it. So once again, every day, 180 degree rotation. And this went on for roughly 16 weeks or about four months, every day rotating it 180 degrees. And then we finally get to the 180 day mark, six months, we finally hit our target and look at the mold. It's completely different at six months than it was at, you know, four months and three months. It smells exactly as it should. There was never a moment when bad mold was growing on it. So let's go ahead and cut into this. I'm super eager to do that. But first, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I've been a customer of Jinda Industries for almost five years and the core of their business revolves around sharpening. Let's be honest. No one picks the dullest knife in the drawer. Jinda Industries makes products to keep your knives and equipment sharp, like the Jigs Guided Sharpening System. It's easy to use, precise, and keeps your knives razor sharp. Jinda also sells everything from whetstones, diamond plates, strops and nano cloths to lapping plates. And because they're a sharpening company, they also have products like the G-Series Butchering Knives, which I absolutely love, the Effin Big Hand-Forged Spring Steel Knife Collection, which are honestly some of the most robust cutlery I've ever seen, and let's not forget about the Jinda's Leather Knife Roll, which is the absolute classiest way to protect and transport your knives. So if you're tired of dull knives and you actually wanna do something about it, after this video, check out the description box below. You'll find a link to Jenda's website along with a coupon code that'll give you a discount off of everything in your shopping cart. We want to thank Jenda for sponsoring this video. Back to the salami. 
After we take our salami out of the chamber, there is one thing we absolutely have to do, especially since our salami is so huge. We've got to squeeze it. What we're doing is checking for soft spots. We want to make sure that our salami is firm throughout. This is going to give us some indication as to how it dried. If you squeeze on your salami and you feel like the outer layer is firm, but the inside is soft, well, that probably means that you've got either case hardening or a severe case of dry ring. But this one felt relatively firm throughout. So let's go ahead and peel back that casing. And as you can see, we've got a nice little coating of mold right there around it. We're just going to rinse that off under some water. And this is what our salami looks like rinsed off. Let's go ahead and put it on the slicer, slice it up and give it a taste. All right, here we go. And I gotta tell you, first impressions, I am blown away. This thing looks absolutely incredible. Let me show you what a regular salami looks like. This is our Cremona salami with Parmigiano Reggiano. And let me go ahead and just eat that right quick. But the size difference was absolutely unbelievable. The salami itself, very well bound together. And although some of my peppercorns are popping out, I'm loving the way that this feels as far as uh, the bind on it. Very little mechanical opening. So. Let's go ahead. Oh, wow, I'm kind of nervous. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. All right, time for the moment of truth. How does it taste? And I gotta admit, I've been wanting to taste this for a very long time. It smells great. It smells like traditional Genoa salami. Uh, this thing is massive. Culinarily speaking, there's a lot of options with salami this big, but I do have one particular thing in mind that we do plan on using this enormous salami for. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe now. You're not going to want to miss that episode. The uh, texture is great. Overall, I would have to say it dried fairly even. We did have a problem in our chamber about midway through with the internal fan, but it actually looks it actually looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and tear a piece off. Let's, let's tear a piece off here. There we go. And this one piece is like, Three salami. Mm. Wow. This is amazing. This is like Genoa, but better. The overall flavor seems enhanced. And I think that probably because the slower drying, you know, the longer aging, a lot like a, like a prosciutto gave the flavors, the starter cultures, the bacteria, the mold, an opportunity to just further develop its flavor. Unlike the normal Genoa salami that takes, you know, anywhere between six to eight weeks, six to nine weeks, this took every bit of six months and I'm glad we made it because it came out incredible. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum seal this salami and pop it in the refrigerator. This is gonna equalize it a little bit. It's gonna allow it to age a little bit further. And trust me, it tastes amazing already the way it is. I can't wait to taste it when we're ready to use it again. If you've got any questions on how we made the world's largest Genoa salami by a home producer, leave them in the comment section below. And if this is the first video you've seen from our channel, we want to say welcome. We invite you to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of all future uploads. Thanks a lot for being here. And if you found anything in this video helpful, a thumbs up would be nice. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.